over the last few years, we've been making some major improvements and repairs to our boat. When we bought our boat, we knew it would need quite a lot of upgrading, so we did save some money for this. In this video, we're going to share our experiences of getting some major jobs done on our boat in Turkey. We were right over on the western side of the Med and sailed all the way to Turkey to use up the final amount of our major repair upgrade budget. We decided to head to the southwestern corner of Turkey because we heard about how beautiful it was there. street in Turkey that's legendary for providing Turkish prices for everything so we need to get lots of jobs done and we're try and get it all in lira so off we are on a couple of dolmishes. We've come to this street in Marmaris called Sanayi and um, it's just loads of workshops along the street so any job you want to get done you probably get done here they've got carpenters, joiners, welders, um, car mechanics and we're just having a look around really to see what there is. Uh, we've got some jobs that need doing and we're seeing if we can find the right person to do it. So it's job hunting. It turns out that Marmaris isn't the only coastal town that has an industrial zone like this. You can also find workshops and chandleries all around the marinas and the town quays and if you can't find what you want they will find the right people in other areas of the town. So we've um, we're trying, to get, we're trying to get our rigging released from customs. The rigging was over 20 years old, so when we decided to replace it, we wanted to use the original ACMO rigging, which we imported from France. Um, it's been delivered from France to Izmir, and then it goes through this process of um, getting really into customs and released through customs. And they only, we only just found out today that they'll only bring it to you and you have to have a pontoon birth number. So we come into the marina to book, it, book ourselves in, um, but they wouldn't give us um, a birth number till we've arrived. So it's kind of like when it's catch 22 and they won't release the religion until we've got a birth number. So we're kind of in this sort of cycle. We've managed to convince the lady that we really just need, doesn't matter where we go, just tell us where we're gonna be. And she's got a number off the marina staff and they've given us a number now. So we might have to come in today. If it's arriving today, we need to be here. If not, we'll just check in tomorrow, receive the goods and then leave again. So yeah, it's quite complicated. We didn't realise it would be like that. Q-Cells imported the rigging for us and by importing it to Turkey, we saved um, over the amount, around 2,000 euros on um, the tax. Right, so today we're going in to the marina to collect our rigging. Our rigging which has been in customs and the whole process is complete and they, we have to have an address to collect it, um, to import, because we've imported it from France. So our address, Today, but one night only is going to be this marina and there's also a pool and there's an air-conditioned room where we're going to do our homeschooling and we're going to wash the boat down so it's very exciting yeah so we're collecting our rigging which is organized by Emra from Q Sales they've organized it all for us they've been brilliant and the marina is called Yacht Marina in Marmaris and it's a really nice place Once the rigging was all aboard, we decided to head further south east to Gocek, where we were going to have the rigging installed. So, we've come to uh, Demarin, which is actually quite an exclusive marina. The other marinas were full, but uh, Emek, who's doing our rigging, um, tried to get us a bit of a discount. So yeah, this is a really nice marina. Um, we're just going to go and find out how much um, he's managed to negotiate for us to get our rigging done here and how much it's going to cost us to stay. It's like the jungle. Is that fun? Yeah. It only worked out about 10% in the end. So we're in the embarrassing position of yet again being moored alongside uh, super yachts. I think we're going to take advantage of this exclusive marina. So this is how I expected cruising life to be. We've got a, a lift to the marina office on a 
for a golf buggy. I think every marina should have one of these. And the rigging should be finished by the end of the day and then we can hop off to somewhere that suits our budget a bit more. So we bought the boat under market value, uh, allowing for the rigging change. So almost two years later, we're actually getting it done. So I suppose we saved ourselves two years of uh, rig change. Okay, so all the guys have arrived to do the rigging of our boat. We are getting the Genoa down and um, we're just gonna make sure they've got everything they need. They're just getting themselves set up. Exciting. Yes, my name is Mustafa. And from Marmaris and the rigging company is M2 Your Service, some 15 years is old company. My name is Murat. <laughs> this name is Oktay. Oktay. And uh, this is Fati. Fati, great. Yes. So it was a job we were planning on tackling ourselves. And uh, yes, we know Dallas did it themselves, but they did have four adults on board and no kids. Um, but we just decided it was a job too far for um, two parents when they've got three kids on board. It's a shame, um, any other time we'd be up for the challenge, but uh, we decided to bite the bullet on this, this one and uh, use the budget from our refit to, to uh, get it done professionally here in Turkey. Right, just trying to get the kids um, ready to go to the beach because it's too hot on the boat because all the hatches are shut and um, they finished their schooling so it's time to um, find something else for them to do or somewhere else for them to go. Nice beach here. What's happening on the boat? And they're doing all the re-rig, which is no, brilliant. I can't imagine us trying to do it. I it for two lira, um, yes? ten cents. Brilliant. Okay, I'll get you two lira, ten cents. They're currently changing the euros into lira, so I think they can go and spend some money. Dari, come on. Darok. Two lira, fifty-nine cents. I mean, fifty-nine. Where are you going? Um, we're going to the beach, but I have eighty-two. Um, no, um, yeah, 82 um, lira. I exchanged a 10 euro note for 72 and I already have a 10. I'm going to take these guys out for hot chocolate if they want to. Okay, with the kids off the boat, the riggers could crack on with getting the whole boat re-rigged. And uh, actually I think it was the right decision in the end because uh, seeing these guys, there's four guys working on the, the, uh, the rig, they've been on it since 9 o'clock this morning and they reckon it'll take about a day, day and a half. And this is four riggers knowing exactly what they do and with experience in animals. I mean, who knows how long it would have taken uh, me and Arenka to do it if it was just us two and the kids on board, um, probably weeks. So yeah, I think it was the right decision in the end. Yes, it's taken a bit of a chunk out of our refit budget, but it, you know, some jobs I think are best left to the professionals unless you know what you're doing, uh, or unless you've got the time to learn, um, which in our case we haven't really, because we've still got the kids to teach, uh, we've got other jobs on, and we've got to get round to Bodrum uh, in a week's time. Cheers, <laughs> Allah. The fourth day for us would have been the trickiest job that we would have had to do. The rigging guy was saying that the there's a Teflon barrier runs the full length of the foil. That's why he's greasing it there, so it just runs freely on the force day. So you can see here where the corrosion starts underneath these protectors because you can't actually clean them very easily and the fresh water runs off and the salt air gets in there and really starts to get into those joints. This is a triadic about to come down. This is the one that really had me baffled before. Because I couldn't really figure out a way of taking it off. But the triadic is what connects the main to the mizzen. So the old one's about to come down and the new one's about to go up. Triadic is what joins the mizzen to the main. And it acts as a bit of a backstay to the main and also a forestay to the mizzen. And so the riggers worked non-stop, except for a short lunch break, they carried on working throughout the day. Turkey is quite unusual for a country in the Mediterranean because they don't stop at two and then come back at four or five. They actually work throughout the whole day and they also work in the evenings as well. And the same goes for most workshops and chandleries. The Turks really do work hard. This is really useful for us, especially because we homeschool in the morning and then in the afternoon we finally get in to go and do our jobs and usually everything's closed but in this case we can find that the shops are all open so it's really useful. I've been 
Steve Riggin has got the date stamp on it. So I've been whisked through the uh, streets of Gocek and uh, took my whirlwind tour of MX Marines yard. The stainless spit of their office. It's a bit bumpy. I don't know what the etiquette is of putting your arms around the driver when you're a 50 year old bloke. What I'm saying here is the, uh, I think he's the technical manager. So, so far he's taken me to show, uh, he's taken me to see um, an ammo that they're doing up uh, a Superman 2000, which is a very similar model to ours. Uh, Showed us some of the modifications that he's done. He's given me a brochure on uh, the new ammo 50, but uh, I don't think we can afford it yet. Maybe in a few centuries. So, apparently he's got a, a 55, an ammo 55 in the marina that uh, we're going to see. I'm just going to check, make sure that uh, it's okay first. This is a 50, 55, yeah? 55. 55, that is very nice. Whole different class. <laughs> the whole table comes up. <laughs> and you know. Wow. Classic ammo decks. I mean, this is this is a design that stood the test of time. I mean, I still don't know why no other boat manufacturers copied this. I mean, it, it might sound disgusting when you first think about it, but there's absolutely no maintenance involved. Apart from every 20 years, it needs a bit of a repaint. Put a few gel coat repairs. Look at that space in the back of there. I mean, this is a boat that's only supposedly two foot bigger than ours, and yet the space on deck just seems vast. Kind of production centre out of town. There's like loads and loads of workshops around here. Mechanic and electric workshop. He says you show me the the new design that he's got with this sort of crane method. I've seen this on a few catamarans actually. It's a really good idea. I mean, the one thing you've got to say about uh, anybody who works with ammos or ammo owners is it uh, instills a lot of loyalty, almost like a cultish following. Yeah, anybody who kind of does any work on them is very proud of kind of show off all of the uh, uniquely ammo features. I think they're great, I think there's still a lot of flawed designs in them. Um, you know, the, uh, the saloon area for instance is not well designed, um, we've made a few modifications, but the engine rooms are obviously fantastic, the room in them for the size of the boat is brilliant. Uh, could do with a few more berths I guess. But anyway, back to the boat now and uh, get up with some more work. So I've had a Raycor filter, a dual Raycor filter delivered from the UK. Um, I think we got it from uh, ASP supplies, which uh, we're doing quite a good deal at the time. So uh, I had it shipped out from the UK and um, now we're in Turkey. I would like to get it installed. So we've got a, a calf filter in there at the moment, um, fitted into a standard Volvo pre-filter. So as you can see, it's a bit of a tight squeeze down here. We've got the engine here and the bulkhead there. And so we've got to fit it here. Even though this pre-filter is fine, um, we can't kind of relying on it because it actually feeds the engine and also the generator. So in the unlikely event of getting dirty fuel in there or contamination, um, if that fuel, if that filter gets blocked, then the whole boat shuts down because we've got no engine and we've got no generator. So we're going to replace it with the dual filter. Uh, two reasons for that. The Raycor filters are extremely good. Um, they are water separators and fuel filters um, and it means that if one, fil one side of the filter becomes blocked you can switch it over to the other fuel filter and then replace the, the original one. This one is a single um, and it's quite difficult to drain as well, you've got to get right underneath to drain it. It's also not a glass bottom so you can't really see if there's any water contamination in there. Um, and just for safety reasons um, sometimes when you're on a rough passage, um, the, the fuel tank can get shaken up a bit. And if there's any debris or any um, gunk in the bottom of that tank, it can actually, actually find its way into the fuel lines. And we want to capture that before it gets into the engine. This is an expensive bit of kit. Um, but we have had um, a fuel blockage before um, and it cost us quite a bit of money to go into a, to get towed into a marina. Um, so we don't want that to happen again, so we feel like it's a good investment. I mean, this is a job that is, is kind of straightforward, it's just loads of pipes and fittings really, but because we've got to get away this afternoon, there's no way I'll be able to do it in the morning. Um, so 
and the other thing is I'm just a bit worried that if I get it wrong then it's going to cause a whole heap of problems so I prefer to get a professional in to do it and I can watch them do it and then if I ever need to do it in the future then I can uh, I can do, go ahead and do that. I've decided to um, pay a local mechanic from Emic Marine to come and install it for me so hopefully the guy's going to turn up uh, in the next hour or two to fit it. So it's uh, quarter to ten the engineer should have been here at um, 9.30 of the latest so uh, it's a bit I feel a bit anxious because we should have been away today um, the latest at lunchtime there's still no sign I mean it's a beautiful anchorage a nice place to wait but um, we need to get away okay so finally the mechanic turns up yes. so this is the backing board for the, uh, the we go jump boru you talk jump super boru we could have just tail just kind of guys are fixing the ray core in now um, it's very tricky because it's right in the corner and there's a shut off valve that runs diagonal across the area so they have to put the mounting plate behind that and then fix the ray core from the behind that as well but obviously we need a bit of clearance off the ground to allow any drain of uh, any water in, in the uh, in the fuel it's tricky and it's really hot down there as well. Plenty of clearance down there. Well, as much as we can allow for getting the water out. Plenty of clearance for the changing the filters. It's a great job that. So it all goes through the filter, tees off underneath to the gen set. So we're having to replace the fuel pipe as well. <coughs> So one of the jobs that they have to do is cut the fuel pipes. So that's Dis diesel tank. Mom. That's the option. Diesel tank. Yeah. Gen set. Gen set. Yeah. Hold on a minute. This is main engine. Okay. Uh -huh. So we basically just cut off fuel pipes there. Uh -huh. And uh, put some new fuel new, in. new. Yeah. I cut it this part. Oh, this I see. Gen set. Yeah. From here coming. This is main sail. Yeah. This side from the tanks. This is the first filling of the new filters. So we're leaving Gojek now. We've just had a pump out. We've tested the filters. We're going to run around to make sure that the uh, fuel is going through the filters okay. So guys from Amag just leaving now. So we're going to get back to Marmaris. We've got. The, um, the cockpit cover to finish off and then that's a lot of jobs ticked off the list. So now we head back to Marmaris to collect the canopy for the cockpit. So North Sales and South West Sales work together and previously they came and they measured up. Uh, I am Mel, I'm working for North Sales and Marmaris, South West Sales as well at the same time. Now we are taking a template for uh, Bimini spray hoods for uh, Mr. Woody's uh, boat. Uh, first template, then we'll bring the top piece and then we'll do the sides afterwards. The next will take about 10 days, the whole procedure will take about 10 days. Thank you. Yeah. Once they've measured up, then they start making a template that they will work from. Okay, doing the cockpit canopy isn't one of those jobs that, that was at the top of the list for us. We didn't think it was a major safety issue, but since having it, we realised how much protection from the sun it does provide and how important that is. So for this job, we also needed some work done with stainless steel. We needed the bars from this old spray hood to be raised slightly to, in, to increase the height. A bar was also added that went across past the mizzen and went between the two shrouds on either side. <laughs> so finally the canopy was complete and then we were ready to install the new sails. Okay, so we're getting rid of our old sails now. Got my brother John helping us. Get the sail down. 
think Robbie knows him, do it, but we'll make sure this doesn't shoot back at the mast. Okay, one of the main reasons we came to Turkey was because we wanted new sails and we came here because we were able to order them in December without actually turning up and having them measured because Q sales already have all the measurements we just needed to know the boat, the year and the hull number and he has all the measurements and was able to pre-prepare them before we came. So I was in communication with Emra all the way from December and he was very useful in organising things for us. He was helpful when we had to order the rigging, he did all the import for us and he pointed us in the right direction for many things. Okay so we're just getting rid of our sails, we're just flaking them at anchor. The wind's picked up a bit so it's a bit tricky and um, yeah we're just going to take them off the boat off the boat and get our new ones hopefully today. Really looking forward to it. We've just got a phone call that the sails have arrived and gonna, they've landed on some random beach. We're going to go and pick up the guys from Q Sails before it gets dark. So off they go to collect the sails. So the sails were delivered and then the next day Emra came back and helped us actually install the sails on our boat. But Emra from Q Sails is coming this morning uh, with some uh, replacement halyard as well because the halyard isn't the right material. We've got polyester halyard instead of the Dyneema core. Um, so we're going to replace that um, so it doesn't stretch as much and uh, helps uh, protect the sails a lot better. The other thing we need to do is when we had the rigging changed, we had some Teflon blocks which uh, had completely disintegrated with UV light over the past 20 years. So uh, we've had some extra ones made up, especially. Uh, it wasn't cheap, it was about 200 euros. These are Teflon blocks which we're going to put on the on the shrouds, just above the spreaders, to protect the, the, the sails as they go around the spreaders every time we, we tackle a jive. So we've got the extra big ones, because we've got two shrouds coming down past one spreader which is uh, quite big. So we've got these donut shaped ones, Teflon barriers and these ones for the uppers and the mizzen as well. The guys who are going to do the sails are coming any minute so we need to get these up as quickly as possible and get them in place. Yeah we've got Emra here from um sails and um, yeah we're just getting he's just come along to help us put the sails on we've got some new halyards and um, yeah we're gonna get our new sails up today brilliant really exciting hi uh, I'm from Q sales and uh, we delivered pro radial sails to Haddock and uh, we are quite experienced on Amel sales and uh, that's all for the moment Imra's team were quite busy on a job further up the coast, so he arranged for Sharp Marine to come and help us with putting the sails up. Right, so with all three sails, we had to get all three sails done. We had to get some new halyards. Um, we had to get new Dyneema halyards because we'd replaced it with this sort of cheap polyester stuff in Tunisia and it wasn't really doing the job because it just stretches and we don't want it stretching. So um, Sharp Marine uh, managed to organise some halyards for us. It's very expensive stuff, this Dyneema, so, but it's good. And um, it's not going to stretch at all. And um, so they had to, to re-mouse two new halyards on the mizzen, the one at the after the boat and the main sail. So um, that was the first job. And yeah, the Genoa had a good halyard already, so that was okay. We didn't expect any help with installing the sails on our boat, but we really appreciated it. We soon realised in Turkey that everyone knows everyone, and if one person couldn't do the job, they would soon find someone who could. For this place. Oh, but it's so windy, we've had to move from the bay where we were, so we've taken um, Emra from Q Sales and Sharp Marine 
over to this very sheltered anchorage but because it's so sheltered it's very busy as well and it's very deep but we're just going to free swing here and they're just attaching the main now the head of the main and they've got the um, clue and they're attaching that and we're going to hoist it up soon looking good it was really great to watch those guys expertly whipping and splicing the halyards and soft shackles So yeah, now the main's going up. Really nice sail. And finally the mizzen sail goes up. We've gone with pro radial type sails for all three sails. We, Hydronet is like the top thing, but that's above our budget, so Pro Radio is also very good. Um, Emra helped us with making that decision. And um, for the UV protection, we've got Sunbrella material, so it's all pretty good quality. And um, I know that the threading's really good as well. We are arranging the final adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, now trimming the sail, especially mm -hmm. the loft. Yeah. <laughs> If you saw our blog in uh, Tunisia, we saw that we, we um, the original ammo setup was this track and the halyard was connected to here. And then to take the tension off, you would tension this under the pin and let it go. But because we haven't so many repairs on the sails, we replaced it with a, a polyester um, halyard, which meant that we could drop it easy without having to mouse anything onto the halyard. So now we've got the new sails and the new rigging, we're going back to the old system, the old ammo system, which has got this track for a tensioner, which is probably just as well because Dyneema Halyard costs over 14 euros a meter. Um, and you can see the benefits of this because it means you don't have to run the Halyard all the way up and all the way down again. It just runs here. And then if you need any more, your mouse, if you need to drop the sail, your mouse line on here, and then the Halyard runs all the way to the top. So you only have to use 50% of the halyard that you would normally use and the other advantage to that is it leaves the deck clutter free so you haven't got lots of line hanging down because in reality you won't have to drop the sail again for a long time well that's what we hope anyway so this halyard is, is dyneema core and dyneema is uh, actually stronger than steel when it comes to this sort of thing and much much stronger than polyester rope as well and it doesn't have any stretch on it so we're going to go back, drop them off, drop our sails off, and um, we might head off sailing, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We had our sails done at Q Sails, and they were, they're really, really good. They made some amazing sails for us. They feel like racing sails. They're so crispy, but um, also, they also... Um, patched up our really old sails as well and cut them down and made us three new set of sails. We've got another set of sails and spares. Um, they made our Genoa into a jib and um, patched up, you know, all the patches that we've done, they patched up again much more professionally. And um, it's brilliant. If we get any situation, we blow a sail or whatever, we've got three spare sails. So that was really good. They did that for us as well. So new sails. So that was all the work we got done in Turkey. We would suggest going to Turkey to get work done on your boat. So you can expect to find the right person to do whatever job you need to do. And if not, someone will help you find the right person. The Turks work really hard and it is in their nature to help you. Okay, so don't expect to find really cheap prices in Turkey, but you can save on the tax because you're exporting whatever you get made on your boat. So you will save on paying their tax. But the Turks, they still use the high quality um, products like Sunbrella material which we use for our UV strip and our sails and our canopy and that costs a lot of money wherever you are in Europe. Marinas also can be a bit pricey in Turkey compared to Greece but not compared to Italy. But the two marinas that we stayed in were, um, were good really. For the price, the facilities you got were excellent. Okay so I hope you find this 
blog um, useful if you're going to get some work done on your boat in Turkey. If you actually want to find out about our travelling and cruising in Turkey, then check out our other blogs. That's all about that. And um, yeah, keep watching. No, but look at me. Cockpit can canopy. Cockpit can our cockpit canopy. Canopy. I can't say it. And me with family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me with family. Sing so this is a really big thank you to our patrons for pledging to Mothership Adrift and supporting us on our journey as we travel around the world. This allows us to make stories and then share these stories with you. If you want to become a patron, it's really easy. Click on the patron button and join our family in this journey around the world. And if you want to do it, do it.